Right before we jump into this video, if you haven't signed up for the Fronos Photo email list, just look for this orange box over on the website, put your name, email address in it, hit send it, and I will send you a free guide to capturing motion in low light situations. Jared Poland, FronosPhoto.com, and this is a user's guide for how to set up your brand new Canon SL3 camera. Now, if you just picked one up, congratulations on picking up this DSLR. If you're looking to purchase one, well, down in the links below, we have a link if you'd like to go buy one at Adorama, or you can check out a five minute portrait, which is 50 some minutes long, where I take this camera out into the real world and test it out. So in this video, I'm going to start off by running through the outside of the camera, and then we're going to move into the menu system to show you how I personally would set it up if I was using it. But first, let's start with the outside of the camera. First things first, on the bottom, this is where your battery is going to go. Of course, you need some power in order to use your camera. So just look on the bottom, boom, open it up. I already have the battery in here. So here we go, this is the battery. I always recommend that you have at least two batteries if you're traveling, because what happens if something happens to one or you run out of juice, you really can't shoot without a battery. So to put it into the camera, if you look inside, you will see a spring. So obviously you don't want the contacts, which are right here, going towards the spring. So just reverse it the other way. There's only one way you can put it in. Slide this little gray tab out of the way, push it that way, push it down and it clicks right in, and that is where you put the battery. Now, right on top of the battery is where your memory card goes. So I'm gonna pop it out right now. This is the memory card. This is an SD card. Remember, don't buy cheap SD cards because you just spent all this money on a camera. You went on a cool trip. You took a bunch of pictures, and if you use some Chinese knockoff memory card that you got for three and a half dollars, you could lose everything. So there's brands out there like ProGrade, Sony makes cards, Lexar makes cards, SanDisk makes cards. Just look for the more professional end of the cards. They're not terribly too expensive anymore. And just remember that. So to put it in, there's only one way to do it. In this case, this notch right here is going to be facing outside of the camera. We pop it down here, press it in. You'll hear the click because it's spring-loaded. It's in, shut the door, and now you're good to go. Flipping back to the top, now that we have a battery and a card in there, this is your on and off switch. I know some of this stuff is simple, so bear with me. It's, it's always good to get this run through. It does get a little more advanced as we go through the menu system, but this is for anybody just starting out who doesn't know some of the basics. On and off, obviously you get it. You know how to turn it on. You go on, now it's on. Now, what is this little movie camera right here? When you go into that mode, that is movie mode. It flips up the mirror, which is inside of the camera, which I'll show you in just a minute, and exposes the image sensor so you have a live view on the back of your camera, which is right here. Now, I'm gonna turn it back to on for now, back into the camera mode, because I wanna show you this, now that I talked about the screen. This is your flip out and rotatable vary angle screen. When you're not using it, you could turn it like this, so if it's in your bag, it won't get scratched and it won't get broken as easy. And when you wanna use it, you just take it out and I flip it like this. This is a touch screen, so when you touch it, it's going to allow you to control the operations. Uh, you can flip it out like this, rotate it, backwards and down, so if you need to hold it up, you can hold it up, or if you wanna shoot from down lower, you can shoot from down lower, but the one thing you don't wanna do is force it beyond where it wants to go, because if you break this, it's going to be a pretty expensive repair. Now, next to the on-off switch, we've got a dial. On the dial, you see the A in green with plus. This is full auto mode. A lot of you guys are gonna start off in full auto and just let the camera do what the camera's going to do to help you take the pictures. Now, if you wanna get out of auto, there are other options. We've got P stands for program. It's basically full auto but you have a little bit more control. It also unlocks other things inside of the menu that otherwise wouldn't be there if you were just on auto. I'll show you that a little later. TV is shutter priority, meaning you set the shutter speed, the camera's gonna set the aperture and the ISO, 
automatically. If you go to AV, that is your aperture priority. You set the aperture, which is how much light you're letting in and how you control your depth of field. Uh, and then the camera's gonna do the rest. And in manual, you set the shutter speed, you set the aperture. If you're in auto ISO, the ISO is gonna set it by itself. Or if you're in manual ISO, you will set the ISO. This right here is a creative mode. So when you go into the creative mode, you're gonna see on the back of the camera, there's other options like monochrome. Think of it as like Instagram mode. It's gonna bake in these interesting looking, sometimes not good looking types of filters. They're built in filters in the camera, which I personally don't recommend you using because once you shoot with one of those filters and you're shooting in JPEG mode, you can't go back and, and change it. So if you shot it in monochrome, you can't get that color back if you wanted to get color back. And then you've got scene mode, which is how you find portrait mode, you find the moon mode, you find low light photography, you find a bunch of different the sports mode. That's where you would go into here and then on the back of the camera, select the mode that you want to use. For now, I'm actually gonna turn the camera back off because there's no reason to let the battery burn while I'm just showing you the outside of the camera. Right here, this button is the ISO button. So if you press that on the back of the screen, it's gonna show you your different choices for ISO and you could either touch it on the screen or turn this top command dial right here which controls that when you press that button. You also have a display button which will turn off the display on the back or run through some different display options and choices that you have. This is a command dial so when you're in manual mode this is going to control your shutter speed. So as you turn it to the right your shutter speed goes up as you turn it to the left your shutter speed is going to go down. If you're in aperture priority mode which is AV, you're going to change your aperture by turning this dial. So now that we've seen the command dial, let's move on to the shutter button. Would you like to show the world that you shoot raw? Well, head on over to store.fronosphoto.com where you will find a bunch of different I shoot raw shirts from Star Wars to Back to the Future to Stranger Things, as well as different color options, hats, beanies, air fresheners, wristbands, and camera bags. So head on over to store.fronosphoto.com if you'd like to pick up some I shoot raw sweat. Now let's move on to the all important shutter button. This is your shutter button. This is how you're going to activate autofocus as well as take the picture. So if you press it halfway down gently, you'll feel it move slightly. That's going to activate the autofocus. Now if you press it fully, you'll feel a little click and you'll also hear it like this when you take a picture. Here we go. I just took some pictures. Look, I'm not even looking. I'm not even looking. Best pictures ever. But you hear that? The beep is saying that it's in focus because I'm in single focus mode. And then when I press the button, I'm taking the picture. So now I'm gonna go ahead and turn it back off again. Now right here, this is your lens. If you bought it as a kit, it's coming with the 18 to 55 lens. Now, how do we take it off and how do we put it on? Right here on the side of the camera is your lens release button. You go ahead and press that and you rotate the lens in this case because it's in the camera's in my left hand towards me and you can take the lens off. Now when we look inside the camera, we see some contacts down at the bottom. Those are contact pins. They talk to the contacts on the lens, which is right here. And that's how the camera knows what to do with the lens. That's how autofocus happens. That's how Basically everything happens inside the lens. That's how the lens talks to the camera. But right here is a mirror. You never wanna to touch this mirror. If it gets dusty, don't worry about it. It's not going to affect your image. What happens when you take a picture, let's see if I can show you right now, is that the mirror flips out of the way and exposes the sensor and exposes the shutter, which is behind it. Never lift the mirror and never touch what is behind there because you will damage your camera. Now to put the lens back on, you see how there's a white square right here? There's also a white square on the camera. Now Canon has a few different types of lenses. This is what's called an EFS lens. It's designed for crop sensor cameras, which is exactly what this camera is. Crop sensor means it's a smaller than full frame sensor. It also is generally less expensive. There's pros and cons to having both, but in this camera, you're perfectly fine with the sensor that's in here. So with the EFS lens, you go ahead and line it up square to square like this, boom, and then turn it away from you this time, and you hear the click. Now it's locked in. So that is how you put the lens 
on this camera. Now I mentioned EF lenses. They have a red dot. So if you have an EF lens, which is a full frame lens, that will work on this camera. That's a really good thing to remember. So if you pick up an EF lens with the red dot on it, you line it up with the red dot right here, just the same way that we did with the square, you lock it in and you're good to go. Now let me show you some of the buttons and dials on the lens. Obviously to zoom it, you just sit here and you turn it like said. I said like said, but because I wanted to actually show you something, how to hold the camera when you're shooting is super important when you're starting out. You see people do this stuff all the time. This is not stable. The proper way, in my opinion, because everybody has a different opinion, we all know that, the proper way is you tuck your elbows in like this, it creates instant stability, you put your eye, whether it's your left eye or your right eye, I personally shoot with my left eye, up to the viewfinder, and this is how I zoom. I just rotate my thumb and forefinger, and it's much more stable. That's how you hold the camera. That's super important to remember. Now here on the side of the lens, we've got AF and manual. Most likely you're gonna stay in AF the whole time. You also have stabilization on or stabilization off. That means you've got image stabilization in the lens. It's called IS. Personally, I'm gonna leave that on all the time with a lens like this. It's gonna help counteract any movement or motion you have from shaking the camera. But remember, it's not gonna make a subject that's moving fast stay in focus or still. It's just counteracting your movements. So this camera does have a built-in flash. Now in some cameras, it automatically pops up. In this camera, you are the automatic popper-upper. Right here, there's some tabs. You pop the flash up like this. If you need the flash, you pop it up. If you don't need the flash, you just leave it down. Now, if you're gonna add an external flash to this camera, there's a hot shoe on top. You can see a bunch of contacts in here. This is where a flash would slide in. The reason you would have a external flash or a flash to put on top of the camera is to give you more power because this flash that is built into the camera is good for maybe 10 to 12 feet. So if you're at a baseball game or at a stadium or something and you're trying to use the flash, you're gonna get a great picture of perfect lighting of the subject that's 10 feet or right in front of you, you're not gonna be able to light somebody at a distance. I made that mistake when I just started out as a photographer. I'm like, ah, oh, I used the flash. And somebody's like, um, yeah, if they're past 10 feet, that flash is meaningless. So just remember that. If they're far away, the flash is not gonna do very much. Now on the back of the camera, we already showed you your tilting, articulating touch screen. So I just generally leave it out like this the whole time that I'm shooting because if you wanna see the image that you just shot, well, you're gonna have to have it out like this. Down here at the bottom, this is your play button. So if you're gonna review your images, you press that to review your images. There's a trash can where Oscar the Grouch pops out. Hi, I'm Oscar the Grouch. I don't even remember what Oscar the Grouch sounds like, but I was Oscar the Grouch for Halloween one year. My mom made me a very nice trash can to carry around when I was in school. I was actually, it was pretty cool. She made some very good uh, costumes for me, but this is your trash can button to delete images. I recommend never deleting images on the camera. Uh, just in case, you, you've got so much room with today's SD cards that don't delete images in the camera. What if you delete the one that you actually wanted? So really don't worry about that. This is your D-pad, the up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, BA, BA, select, start, contra code. I know, thankfully I've said it a million times, but this is probably the first time you're watching my videos, which now is a good time to tell you if you're enjoying this video, please hit the subscribe button. There's also a bell next to it, which is the notification bell, hit that. So when I put up a new video, you never miss it. I've got 3,000 videos, so there's a lot of videos in the past for you to check out if you're looking to learn them, including a best of playlist, which will run you through some of the best videos that we have on the channel. But please subscribe, it helps us to continue to do what we're doing, and it lets us know that you like it. Well, actually, what lets you know that, lets us know that you like it is hit that thumbs up button to let us know that you do like it. All right, so continuing back here, this is the D-pad. This is how you change different menu settings or change different options when you're moving through the camera. You've got the set button as well as the Q button. Canon does something pretty cool with the Q button where when you hit the Q button, it brings up a bunch of different options on the back of the camera so that you don't have to dive into the menu as deep. Right above the D-pad, you see something that says AV, 
as well as plus minus. The plus minus is for exposure compensation. I never change my exposure compensation, but the AV is important. Remember on the top of the camera where we showed you AV for aperture priority? Well, how do you change aperture when you only have one command dial up here is you will press this button, and as you're pressing and holding, you will turn the top command dial, and that will change your aperture. As soon as you take your finger off of it, it's going to allow you to change your shutter speed. Moving over to this part of the camera, you've got a star, and whenever you see something printed next to it, that means that it also has a sub-command option of doing whatever this one is, which is, uh, that's the minus. So when you're zooming in on an image using the top button, because that's where you have a magnifying glass to zoom in, to get back out, you go ahead and hit this button with the star on it. The star is also an exposure lock. It's not something I personally use, so most likely you won't be using it either. But this button right here with the, the it's a bunch of dots and a bunch of crosshairs, that's how you activate your focusing points in the camera when you're doing autofocus. So you could either have the camera select all the points or when you tap on it, just tap it in. Just Tap it in, give it a little tappy. When you tap it in, it's going to activate those focusing points and then you can manually select the one that you want to use. I'll show you that more when we get inside the camera. Now moving over here, this button of a camera, when the camera is on, we hit this, that turns on live view. So if you wanna shoot with the camera, holding it out like this as if it's like your cell phone, you can do that. Just remember that it's not as stable when your hands are out like this. It's gonna be a little more shaky, so IS is gonna come in handy. I don't personally recommend shooting live view. One, it kind of looks amateurish, if that's, uh, that's up to you, if you wanna look like that. Two, it's just more stable and easier to look through the camera. But if you do need to use live view, you do have that option right there. This also works as your record button because you see next to it, there's a red dot. When you press it in, while in video mode up here, it's going to start recording video. Next to that, you've got plus minus with this little dial. That is your diopter. So if you wear glasses, you can go ahead and just control the diopter until you see that everything is in focus inside the camera. Uh, it's really easy to do. Just focus on a wall or focus on something and then turn the diopter until everything is nice and sharp for you. This is your optical viewfinder. Optical means when you look through it, you're seeing through the lens because how this works is light comes in through that lens, it bounces off that mirror, up through a prism, and then out through the viewfinder, which is right up against your eye. So what you see is what you're going to capture. It's the same light that you're seeing through the camera. Moving further to the left, we've got an info button. So if you wanna see different info, if you're reviewing an image, it will bring up the info. Right here is the menu button. The menu button will do just that. It brings up the menu. You press it, the menu pops up, that's how you can control different settings inside the camera and set up your camera, which we're gonna do in just a few minutes. We're gonna show you how to set up the camera. Moving around to this side, we have a mic input as well as a remote input. You just move these tabs out of the way. It's pretty good that you can put a microphone input in here. So if you picked up, say, a Rode microphone, you can go ahead, plug it into here. Now you're gonna record audio directly into your video. That's a really good feature that Canon put in here that some of the other entry-level cameras don't have. Now flipping it all the way around to the other side, you have a USB port for transferring images if you would like, as well as an HDMI port if you wanna show the images on a TV. You just move the tab right there, HDMI as well as USB. Moving around to the very bottom of the camera, that's where the tripod plate goes or where you attach the tripod to this camera, so that is a run through of the outside of the camera. Now it's time to move into the menu settings and how I personally would set it up. Are you new to shooting RAW files or are you interested in learning how to edit your RAW files? Well, we created 14 custom Lightroom presets that are gonna give you a great starting point as well as in some cases with one click, give you an amazing looking edit. Now you can head on over to fronosphoto.com slash presets where you can play with the sliders to see the befores and afters and decide if they're for you. Right now they're on sale for 40% off, so if you'd like to take advantage of that, go ahead and add it to the cart to take advantage of 40% off. Now let's get back to the video. 
before I jump into the menu settings, I want to call attention to the elephant in the room, and by elephant, I mean this red box. This is an Atomos recorder. What this is allowing me to do is plug into the HDMI, which is taking the video signal from the menu and everything I'm gonna show you, and putting it into this box so we can record it so you can see exactly what I'm doing, and you can also follow through or follow along while I'm doing it. So right now, we are in the full auto mode. Watch what happens when I hit the menu button you have your menu choice options. I'm gonna go ahead and hit OK, but look at this. I only have two different things to choose from, menu one and menu two. I'm gonna go through the full manual setup. So I'm gonna turn this up here to manual, bypassing all this other graphical stuff. Now we're in manual. I'm gonna hit the menu button again. I'm gonna hit OK. And now look, it opened up six different menu options for us to go through to set up this camera. That's how you unlock the power of your camera. It's kind of like Castle Grayskull when Adam turns from Adam into He-Man and he goes, I have the power. You kind of now have the power. So you want to take advantage of your camera. So let's run through here. First things first, we have image quality where it is currently set to large JPEG. Now let's quickly explain RAW versus JPEG, being that I'm wearing a shirt that says I shoot RAW, can you guess what setting I would set this on? RAW, because that's how I shoot. Uh, but when you're first starting out, a JPEG is, per is perfectly fine. The difference is a JPEG is a compressed file, where a RAW file is uncompressed, you get all this data, and it means that you need to tweak and edit each individual file in, in the computer after the fact. That's why some people start off shooting RAW plus JPEG so that they have both options. That's up to you to determine, but as you progress as a photographer, you wanna have more control of your images. Just think about it. Remember earlier when I said if you shot in monochrome, black and white, when you are shooting uh, a JPEG, it's always gonna be black and white. But if you were shooting RAW, it keeps all of the RAW data. The preview on the back of the camera will still show you black and white monochrome, but you have the raw file. You can go back and make it color again. So I'm a big fan of personally shooting raw. So in order to change this, I'm using the left and right dials right here, the left and right buttons. That's how we can change it. Personally, I would leave raw, uh, sorry, JPEG on large. And then to change the raw, you can see on the screen the indicator of the, the top command dial. I can turn that to RAW, and it's showing me RAW plus JPEG, and with the memory card that I have in the camera, I'm gonna get 1,286 pictures. I go ahead and hit the OK button to set it in. Oh, and by the way, you can do all of this using the touch screen on the back of the camera. Being that I'm plugged into this Atomos, I can't use the touch screen. Image review is something that I personally turn off. Now what it is, you can actually see it popping up on the screen right here. It tells me that choose how long images are displayed on the screen after you capture. I don't like the images popping up on the screen after I take the pictures, so I go ahead and turn that to off. Release shutter without card. Uh, it, you can see this, by the way, it's gonna pop up and give you any information. It, basically, it's your user's manual built into the camera, so if you're not sure about something, just hover over it, and it's gonna go ahead and say, avoid shooting without a card in camera. Well, that kind of makes sense. Release shutter without card? No. I wanna disable that. I do not wanna be able to shoot pictures if a card isn't in the camera, because what's the point of that? You won't actually be getting pictures. Lens aberration correction. Uh, Peripheral, look, you could leave all this stuff exactly as it is. This is only going to affect the JPEG. It's probably for the better if you're shooting. It's gonna do some little corrections that you would otherwise not even notice. So I would probably just go ahead and leave that on if that's what you're gonna do. Gonna go ahead and hit menu again. Flash control, uh, configure functions of built-in flash and external flash. You really don't have to go in here very often, so uh, I'm just gonna skip past and go to number two. Under this, oh, look at that one option, drive mode. So here we go, we've got single shooting mode. We've got continuous shooting. Earlier when I was taking a bunch of amazing pictures of this light over here without looking, I was in continuous mode. So it was gonna, as long as you hold your finger down on the button, click, 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 it's gonna keep shooting. 
Uh, that's good for action sports or where you're trying to capture the subject running across the field. It's great for action. Silent single shooting, probably never need to go into there. The camera is pretty quiet already, but this is gonna make it slightly a little more quiet. Silent continuous shooting is gonna be slower shooting, sort of silent, but not really fully silent. Uh, you've got self-timer of 10 seconds, self-timer of two seconds. This mode is pretty cool. Self-timer continuous, where when you press the button, you can take something like, what, nine, up to nine images? Nine, 10, ooh, up to 10 now. So when you would set it on a tripod, you could hit a button, and it's gonna take 10 pictures in a row. So that's pretty cool if you're doing a group shot. Like, everybody, hey, say cheese. Do you know what we actually said as kids? My dad was always like, he'd smile and he'd be like this. Say sh That's all I remember as being a five-year-old is say sh Personally, you're gonna be either in single shooting or continuous shooting, most likely continuous for most of the time. Hit set to get okay. Now moving on to number three. The reason I laughed right there and chuckled a little bit is because when you get into the pro cameras, there's eight trillion more modes to play with. Uh, so it was kind of funny just to see one different option. Exposure compensation, set that to zero at all times. ISO speed settings, we're gonna go in here. ISO speed is currently set to auto. I don't like auto. I wanna uh, make all the changes myself. So I like to control this. I'll go to 100. Now, let me give you a quick crash course on ISO. 100 ISO is for super bright areas. If you're inside and it's dark, you're not gonna be using 100 ISO. If you're outside or shooting action sports, 400 ISO might be a good starting point. When it's low light situations, 1600 and beyond, but I may not recommend going past 6400. As you go higher in ISO, the noise and grain in the camera starts to become more prevalent. So you'll see more noise, you'll see more grain, kind of like an old film grain. Uh, so I wouldn't really go past 6400 if I were you. Now this is a good place to say that if you'd like to take better pictures in only 11 days, I created a free mini video course that you can sign up for right now at fronosphoto.com slash 11 days. You're gonna get 11 emails across 11 days with 11 free videos. It's a pretty good crash course in photography, so go ahead and sign up for that. It is also linked down below. Moving on, I hit set and okay. Uh, max, max for auto is 6,400, so if you're in, you could change this to say, don't go past 12,800. In this case, it's at 6,400. Now to change ISO, remember there's that ISO button on top of the camera right here. You're gonna hit that, and then you can go ahead and change ISO when you're outside of the camera. So we're gonna go back and hit menu again. We've got auto lighting optimizers off, I leave this off. Highlight tone priority is off, I leave that off. Metering mode, I'm just gonna show you these. You got evaluative metering, partial metering, spot metering, and center weight metering. Uh, 9,999 million times out of 100 million times or whatever I just said, one less than that. I'm in evaluative metering at this point. Moving on to number four, white balance. For most part, uh, for most shooting, you're gonna leave it on auto. It's gonna go ahead and do a pretty good job of selecting the proper white balance. Now, if you're shooting raw, you can easily, more easily change white balance after the fact. You are able to change white balance when you shoot JPEG. You just have more control with the raw file. Custom white balance, if you ever wanted to set a custom uh, number, you can go in there and go ahead and do that. White balance shift, I leave that on zero. Color space, sRGB, and then picture style. Picture style is interesting. Uh, this is where you can see auto, standard, if you're gonna do portraits, landscapes, fine detail, neutral, faithful, old faithful, monochrome, and then you can create up to three of your own. Most of the time I leave it in auto or standard. Now remember, picture styles are only going to affect your JPEGs and your video. So if you set it to monochrome for video, you're only shooting black and white video, aka monochrome. You're never gonna get the color back if you're in that mode. So keep that in mind that if you are gonna shoot just JPEG and you over sharpen something, you can't go back after the fact and under sharpen it because it's baked in. And by baked in, I mean it's literally just that's how it's going to be. The more changes you make to a JPEG after the fact, the more it's going to lose quality. That's why I love RAW files, because you can constantly go back to the original RAW file time and time again, 10, 15 years later, 
and make tweaks and changes. Moving on to the fifth menu, long exposure noise reduction. I personally leave this off. High ISO speed noise reduction. I'm going to go ahead and turn this off as well. I don't want the camera, what, what it's doing with noise reduction, remember how I said at higher ISOs you get some noise or grain? The camera's gonna go ahead and run a process where it's gonna smooth it out. Now smoothing out tends to take away sharpness and clarity. I rather have a, I rather see the grain structure than have a smoothed out looking fake image that's not sharp my personal preference. Uh, dust delete data, something I don't ever touch. Live view shooting is currently enabled. This is super simple, guys. This is, this is a simple camera to use, but it's good to go through these sections. Now, number six, AF operations. This is important. One shot, that means that when you press the button halfway down, you're gonna hear a beep. And as long as your finger is pressed halfway down on the button, the focus is locked on whatever you were locked on. But that doesn't mean if the subject moves that it's going to track them. You will need to refocus when the subject moves. If you move forward, you move back, you're gonna send it out of focus, so you need to press the button halfway down, hear that beep, that beep lets you know that it's in focus. Now, AI focus is where the camera's gonna automatically choose between one shot or AI servo. I don't like that mode. Uh, AI servo is continuous focus. So as long as your finger is pressed halfway down on the button, it's going to continuously autofocus on whatever subject it is that it's autofocusing on. This mode is great for sports, great for subjects that are moving, and one shot is great for inanimate objects that aren't going anywhere where you lock the focus in, compose, recompose, and go ahead and shoot. Hit the set button again. We've got lens electronic manually focus takes effect with lenses that have electronic focusing rings. Okay. I mean, it's currently off, but that's pretty simple that if you want to change it, you can do that. AF assist beam firing is on. That's that annoying light. I didn't know this had that. Actually, where is that? I, I don't know why they say, I don't even see where that AF light would be. Steven, you, you have any clue? I didn't even see there's a beam. Where would that beam even come from? Or maybe it would come from when you pop the flash up to have the AS, Let, let's see what it says, because I can't even find it. Flash fires if needed. I was right. I was right. Okay, so I would recommend turning that off. That is, <laughs> oh my God, I'm turning that off. Now I know what it is. So basically what that is doing is when the flash is popped up in the air, it's going to, in low light situations, it's gonna pulse like brrrr. Which is gonna give the camera enough time to try and autofocus on you. Yeah, it's super annoying and distracting. So I personally turn that off. And we're gonna go back to the menu. Let's go back in here. That's it. That's it for this section. Back to the menu. And next we can move on to playback settings. So it says configure still movie playback settings and edit stills in movies. Okay. I hit okay. Protect oh my god, most of this stuff we're not even gonna touch. Protect images, rotate images, erase images, print or, no. We're not even doing any of this stuff, so I, I, I don't do this stuff. Creative assist, red eye reduction, create albums. Nope, don't do any of this stuff either inside of the camera. Moving on to this, slideshow, set image search uh, conditions, image jump, that's so that if you're reviewing images and you turn this top command dial, it's gonna skip 10 images at a time. Histogram display, uh, choose the type of image histogram, brightness. I'll show you what this looks like in just a second. AF point display, who is disabled? AF point that achieved, ah, I'm gonna show you this also. So I'm gonna enable this. This is gonna say in playback, it's gonna show you where or which focus point you were using. View from last scene. I don't even know what that means. Set the initial image position on the playback screen. Oh, okay, yeah, we'll do that. Now let me go into the playback mode so I can show you some of this stuff in action. I go ahead and hit the play button down here. Ooh, look at that. Because it was on auto, that the, all those focusing points right there, that's what it's showing you. So to move images, I'm hitting right. When I hit right, that rotates through. Oh, that's one of those amazing pictures. Wow, the camera did a great job of auto exposing for that light right there. Just imagine if that was the moon. It's not the moon, because we don't have a full moon here in the factory, but it's going through each one of those. So I'm gonna go through. All right, hold on. Bad image, okay. That's the Atomos. Back to this one. Now if I hit up, it should rotate through something, which it's, it's not. Now in Nikon cameras, if I hit up, 
that actually transitions the info, but on this camera, you've got that info button, don't forget. And if I hit info, look at that. It's showing me what the picture was taken at, 1 80th of a second at F4, ISO 800, JPEG large. Hit it again, that's the histogram, top right corner. It also shows you what all of your picture styles were set at. Uh, then you hit it again, and we're back to the main screen for viewing your images. Super simple stuff right there. Again, this is a very intuitive, it's a simple but smart camera. It, I know it's super inexpensive, but it's, it's capable of doing some good things. So we just went through all of the playback menu. I know that was super easy. So we're gonna then go on to wireless settings. Let me cut in here real quick and say, if you're looking to purchase new or used camera gear, head on over to adorama.com slash fro, because when you use that link, it helps us to continue to make free videos just like this one. Now, let's get back into the video. Now we're in wireless settings. I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay. I actually used this on a photo shoot where I put this camera up on a monopod and used my phone with the Canon Connect app, which I highly recommend that you download. Uh, we've got Wi-Fi, Bluetooth connection. You click on it. I would tell it that I'm gonna use my iPhone, which I did. So it's really easy to set up. Wi-Fi settings are enabled. Bluetooth is enabled. This is the nickname of the camera. Uh, GPS settings device, it's a configure GPS to settings, uh, device settings, and clear wireless settings. It's really easy to set up Wi-Fi. It's actually pretty cool because what you could do is you could set this camera up on a tripod, you can then use your phone with the Canon Connect app if you're doing a group shot and you can tap to focus, you can change the settings and you can shoot the pictures and make sure everything is good. That's a really great function that you wouldn't have found in cameras say five years ago. You do have that feature in this camera right here. Now we've got function settings, configure camera settings, adjust screen brightness or format cards. They make this so easy for you. Select folder, don't change that. Uh, file numbering, continuous. So when you take 10 pictures, take the card out, put another card in, it's gonna pick up at file number 11. So that way you don't have repeating numbers. Like you don't have 10 pictures that are number 10 and it becomes confusing in the computer. Auto rotate, this means on, on the camera and the computer. I turn this to on, on the computer. Now, the reason I personally do that is that when I shoot a vertical picture, if I was to, which I don't have a sample right now, it would only show up on just, it would turn vertical on the horizontal display. So it's not showing me full screen. I wanna see it full screen when I rotate the camera this way so that I can see the full vertical image. But in this setting, it's still rotating it on the computer, which I highly recommend that you do so that the images come up either horizontal I call it horizontal, that's horizontal. And then vertical is the other way. It will auto rotate it for the computer. Formatting a card, which we're not actually gonna do right now. Uh, this is where you will go when you put a new card into the camera, you will reformat it or you will format it inside the camera so that the card and the camera can talk better together. And this also clears and erases everything on that card. So before you reformat a card, make sure everything is backed up on a computer and in a second place. It's always good to have at least two backups, not just one external hard drive and nowhere else. Get it on a hard drive, get it up into the cloud somewhere, Amazon or Google, they give like pretty inexpensive storage because it's very important that you don't lose your images because you have a hard drive crash. So make sure they're backed up in multiple places. And uploading them to Facebook doesn't count as one of those places because it changes your settings. So I'm not gonna go ahead and, uh, actually it takes away the quality, that's what I mean by changing the settings. This is where you would go to do that. This is a 64 gig card, we're using 80 megabytes on it so far, um, and back to the menu. Number two, auto power off is currently disabled so that the camera doesn't reset while we're recording and mess up our recording, I would change auto power off to be like a minute or five minutes so that the camera will turn off. Display brightness, this is if you're outside, you can make it extra bright or you could turn it down. Screen off on button is the shutter button so that turns off the back of the screen when you're shooting. Date and time, you will set that right here and the language you will set right here depending on what language you would like to read in the camera. I have it set to English because that's all I know. Video system is right now an NTSC. Uh, if you get into PAL, that's if you're in Europe. 
Uh, we've got touch control is currently on standard. Disable touch operation or set the screen sensitivity. Uh, so if you're one of those sensitive people, you will wanna go ahead and tell the camera that you're sensitive and it will not tell you that your pictures suck. Well, that's not true. I leave it on standard personally. Beep is enabled. I like hearing the focus beep when I'm in single focus mode, but if you're in a silent place or a place you need to be quiet, you're gonna disable that beep right here. You would go ahead and hit disable. Battery info is gonna show us how much is remaining, though it's not gonna give us an exact representation of it, it's going to be pretty close. So once it gets to half power, just know it's probably gonna die a heck of a lot quicker than it took you to get to half power. Sensor cleaning is where you can go in if you have dust on the sensor, the camera's gonna automatically clean the sensor for you. So let the camera do that when you feel like it needs to do that. Switch buttons, currently disabled. I want it to be exactly what it was. HDMI resolution, which we are using right now, is 1080p. Uh, we've got number five, custom function buttons. This is where you, go oh my God. Oh my gosh. Lots of different custom options. I highly recommend you go through here and read them to see what you would set. But really, where it's set right now, is pretty much where I would have it set. Exposure, expansion, I nope, I leave that on off. Safety shift, that's for if you're uh, if the safety is in football, you wanna make sure that he shifts. Yeah, go through here. Most of this stuff is, is already set for you, um, but if you wanna dive in a little deeper, you can of course read what each thing means in here. But they have it pretty set right off the bat. Let's see, one, what did I change right here? Oh, nothing. Oh, that's 10. <laughs> it's 10 and 11. So I honestly didn't change anything for my shoots in the custom function mode. Hitting menu one more time. Oh, let's hit it again, because it takes us all the way out. Are you looking for a place to showcase your photos and online portfolio? Well, I personally use Squarespace for jaredpoland.com, and if you'd like to get a 14-day free trial to try it out for yourself, head on over to squarespace.com fro. And if you decide that it's for you, use the code fro at checkout to get 10% off your first order. Display level settings, customize information display for your ability or preference. Now, so this is where you would go to change out of this beautiful white screen and shooting screen. I don't, I want it on standard. Menu settings, I want it on standard. This, <laughs> this standard setting, you see the difference now on the back end? It just, this is how their professional cameras look. So I highly recommend that you set it in these settings. Uh, so mode guide, yeah, I don't want any of this enabled, but if you're a beginner and you're in auto mode, you won't even have these options to change. And also, it gave me this right here, my menu tab. So now you can add different things that you wanna quickly get to. Say you wanna add battery and life indicator, you can add that right to this section. And finally, back out to the menu one more time. Well, that is our menu now that we got rid of the guide. That is how we set up the menu for taking stills, and now, I'm gonna show you how you set it up for shooting video. So here we are in video mode. I went ahead and switched the dial right here from on to video mode, which activates video mode, flips the mirror up, like I said earlier, and now I hit menu. Now the first thing you will notice is that the menu is set more professionally because that's the mode that I ended up using because I like this look better. So let's go into movie record size. Right here at the top, you can see that it says 4K at 24 frames a second. Max record time is 29 minutes and 59 seconds. Now keep in mind, if you're gonna shoot 4K, you are losing the ability to do dual pixel AF, which is one of the greatest modes ever invented in cameras for doing autofocus. So you'll have a not as good autofocus mode. Also, an extreme crop will be implemented inside this camera when you are shooting 4K. So your 18 to 55 will no longer act like an 18 to 55. It will be much longer. So the widest won't be 18. Keep that in mind. I don't really recommend shooting in 4K unless you're shooting an interview of somebody and it's locked off. Locked off means you're just sitting in one spot and doing an interview. So I'd recommend being in 1920 by 1080 at 30 frames a second. That's probably the best place where you're going to be. Digital zoom, disabled. I never enable anything digital zoom. Sound recording is currently set to auto. If you do wanna go in and control your own levels, you can go ahead and do that. But for the most part, auto is where you're going to live. 
Movie Digital IS is currently enabled. That's another form of image stabilization that will work in conjunction with you having IS on the lens. I don't know that you really need to have digital activated as much if you have it in the lens, but if you do do it, it crops in just a little bit because it has to get rid of the shake that you're doing. Uh, it's actually not terrible when you use it, but in most cases, I would probably leave it on disabled. Lens aberration correction. Let's see, correct for the effects of lens uh, optical characteristics. On, that's up to you. I personally don't change it from where it's set right now in the camera. Time-lapse movie mode is currently disabled. Now, the reason it's disabled is because we are plugged into HDMI, so you would just go ahead and hit enabled to do time-lapse movie mode. Remote control and video snapshot are also both disabled. Exposure comp, I leave that exactly where it is. ISO speed settings, you're gonna set this to taste. You could do auto or you could set it yourself uh, to get the desired effect that you're looking for. Optimizer, auto light, off. Highlight tone priority, off. Um, and metering timer is currently set to eight seconds. I'm not even sure why this matters when it comes to shooting video, but it's there. Eight seconds is perfectly fine. White balance for video, you can set that. Also custom white balance, white balance corrections. Picture style is set to auto. Uh, this is where you could go in and say, if you wanna shoot it in monochrome, you could shoot it in monochrome, which I personally don't recommend because then you can never have color. You can go you know, get rid of the color in post-processing and still be able to go back to it. Uh, AF method. Here's some different options. You've got lock on tracking. You've got spot AF, one point AF, as well as zone AF. The lock on tracking is fantastic in this camera. So I recommend being there for most of the shots that you're on. Moving on, movie servo AF is currently enabled. Of course, you want that to be in continuous. That's why it's currently enabled when you're shooting video. Eye detection AF is a new mode that will detect the eye. Currently it's disabled. You can try it out to see how well it works for you. It's not gonna be the greatest, it's not gonna be the worst. So honestly, just try it out to see if you like the option uh, that it gives you. Lens electronic manually focus. Again, this is set to off. Manual focus peaking settings. It's off as well. Um, and then we've basically gone through all of this stuff already. So because we're in video mode, you get the options to set the video mode for menu. So if you're digging around, you're like, why can't I find this? Make sure you're set to video if you can't find those specific menu settings. Now we're in video mode because I wanna show you one, how to shoot video and two, explain what is on the screen. So first I'm gonna hit the record button, which is right here. You see the red blinky blink in the top right hand corner. And then up here on the left, there is the battery indicator as well as the timer, which is counting up to 29 minutes and 59 seconds. Now, before I go too far, I do wanna show you, we've got Steven. Steven, can you step to the side a little so I can get your face? There, you see the autofocus is tracking his face. That is fantastic that it can just find him, put a box around his face and go from there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to stop recording. I'm gonna put the lens cap on to make it easier for you guys to see everything. And now let's start at the top left. You can see that we're in manual mode. Right below there is the AF lock on. That was the box that you just saw around his face. It's in HD at 29, uh, basically 30 frames a second. Below there is what I think is the digital zoom, but I'm gonna hit the Q button on the back of the camera and I'm gonna scroll down here and yep, that's right, it's digital zoom and that's where you can see the different options. You've got the hand waving at you because the digital image stabilization is currently off. Then under there is video snapshot is off. Top right hand corner, that's where you have your white balance, your picture style, then auto lighting optimizer is off as well as creative filters. We have all of those off as well. And that's about it for changing the settings. If you wanna quickly hit the Q button, which basically stands for quickly, uh, you get into there. But down here on the bottom of the screen, you can see the indicator that's showing how to change your shutter speed. And then if I press the AV on the back, the aperture, switches so that lights up and then you can go ahead and change the aperture while you're shooting your video. And to the right of that is ISO, which is currently on auto, but if I hit the ISO button on top right there, I could switch out of it from 100 to 200 all the way up to 12,800. So you can go ahead and make those changes and that's pretty much it. It's pretty simple, guys. You just go out there, shoot, 
follow the instructions on the screen, but this is how I would set the camera if I was shooting video. Since I just showed you the back of the camera for video mode, let's show you the back of the cameras for still mode. So this is what you will see when you make the changes that I showed you earlier. You will see on the back of the screen, you've got manual at the top. Then you've got where you change your shutter speed. Like I said earlier, you hit the AV button. That allows you to go ahead and press and then change the aperture. Of course, you could go over to ISO as well. Let me, let me hit the Q button. See, now everything is active. I can go in here and make changes to everything that is on the screen, from picture style to white balance to the custom white balance setting, the autocorrect image brightness is off, uh, choose the metering modes, one shot. This, this is more important. You go into one shot versus going into servo to go into continuous. Right here is where you will change your focusing point. So if this is, if you want to change it on the back of the camera, I go ahead and hit the OK button. That takes me in. I hit the OK button again, and that allows me to select between these nine different auto focusing points. Or if I want to get it for the camera to select the focusing points, I hit the Q button again back out to menu. We've got this is where your timer is and raw plus JPEG. That's where you can go in and make those changes. So that's pretty simple and that's it for what's on the back of the camera when you are shooting stills. So now you're an expert, right? Now you can set up this camera, you can do whatever you want with the camera. It, it's not that difficult and hopefully this video helped you out. And like I said earlier, please hit subscribe if it helped you and definitely hit that thumbs up and leave some comments down below. Now all I have to say is go out there and shoot, have fun. If you wanna shoot raw, shoot raw. That's what I do and that's it. Jared Polinfronosphoto.com. See ya.